Okay, let's think of the work done by the magnetic force F B. Okay, so we know that the magnetic force on a charged particle of charge Q that's moving with velocity V in a magnetic field B is given by this cross product. And so if we want to calculate the work done, then we have to do the integral of this force. This is actually the definition. The work is defined as the integral of the force over the distance. And we're going to replace this, sorry, keep doing this, by the magnetic force. It's not just any old force, so it's Q V cross B. Okay, so that's some vector. And we're going to dot that vector into dr, which we can write in the following way, q times v cross b dot, I'm going to divide dr by dt, and then multiply by dt, and I can see that this quantity here is just the velocity. So this reduces to the integral of q times v cross b dot velocity integrated in time. But this vector, v cross b, is perpendicular to the velocity by the right-hand rule, right? Velocity and magnetic field can have any direction, and the vector is not zero if they're not aligned or anti-aligned, but what you get is the thumb, and the, and the right-hand rule says that the result is a vector that's perpendicular to V and B. So if we get a vector that's perpendicular to the velocity, and then we dot that into the velocity itself, we have a dot product between two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, and therefore that dot product is zero at every point. So we're integrating zero at every point. And so the work done by magnetic forces is always zero. This is an issue of principle. It doesn't depend on the path. But these are the conditions for circular motion, right? An object that travels on a circle experiences a force toward the center, right? we call it the centripetal force, Fc, while the motion is, is tangent to the circle. So that's the direction of the velocity, or if you want, that's where the increments dr occur. And so you get at every single point along the path that f dot dr equals zero. We can see this at other locations. dr is tangent, and f is toward the center, and so on. So we always have zero as a result of the dot product between the force and the displacement. But what this is telling us is that because of the work kinetic energy theorem, work is equal to the difference in kinetic energy. But if, that, if, that's, if the work is zero, then it means the kinetic energy difference is always zero. And if the kinetic energy difference is always zero, it means that the speed of the object is unchanged. So this is constant. So although the force is not zero, the speed is unchanged. And so how is it possible for a force 
to not be zero, and therefore via f equals ma to give rise to an acceleration that's not zero. All right, so there's an, a, a centripetal acceleration via ma equals f, which isn't zero, but that must, by definition, right, tell us about the time derivative of the velocity. Right, so this is not equal to zero in circular motion, yet the speed is unchanged. So what's changing in the velocity? Well, it must be the direction. And in fact, we can see the direction of the velocity, which is the same as dr, as we used up here. Right, the velocity vector continues to change direction, but not magnitude. So it's a very, these are very special conditions, the conditions for circular motion. You can think of them as the result of a force that does zero work.